Hello and welcome to an unusual video. I don't know how unusual it is, a type of video that I haven't done before. And it's talking about programming or to be specific about something that I've been working on for almost a year now, I think, or about a year, something somewhere around that ballpark. Um, and it is an own image editor, which at the moment is called vEdit or vEdit, vEdit, whatever you want to call it. And um, the whole thing is written in QB64. If you don't know QB64, QB64 is an open source modern continuation of BASIC. If you know BASIC, that was a language that was really popular in the 90s. And... Um, well, the 90s have been a while. Many people don't really use BASIC anymore or BASIC likes. So it's kind of odd to choose this language to actually do a project. I want to explain why I chose this language because I've had some people be like, well, why do you do it in this? Why don't you do it in, I don't know, C Sharp or something? And the sole reason is that BASIC has a super simple syntax, the first aspect, and the second aspect is that I've grown up with it, more or less. I've been coding in BASIC since I was 11, so it's now, uh, I'm 22 right now, uh, so it's 11 years of experience. So I know the language pretty much in and out, and um, that's a huge advantage when trying to do an actual project compared to uh, C Sharp or anything like that, which I don't really know anything about. So this is sort of my go-to language to build desktop applications. The good thing as well about it is that it works not only on Windows, but it works on Mac OS, and I do think Linux as well. So it's compatible across pretty much the entire desktop board, if you will. And uh, that's sort of what I want to target as well. For this program, I've written an entire menu framework entirely from scratch um, for all these buttons right here, or all these drop-down menus, stuff like that, if I like change the color scheme or something. It's entirely self-written. The entire thing works sort of like HTML in a way. I have a file where the UI is sort of described and it's one page that you see right here. That is one file basically. And then you can s easily switch between those because you have actions and stuff like that. And the sweet thing about, us, uh, about it is that you have easy relational positioning. So you can say, okay, well, this item is to the left of this item. And it sort of just applies a general margin or something to it. I wanted to keep it simple and not go the way of CSS because CSS, yes, has a high flexibility, but also has its complications and makes things a little harder when they sometimes shouldn't be, in my opinion, for very general things. So um, yeah, that's what I've done here. And I want to show you the general interface that I've made for vEdit. And it sort of looks like this. You have this main artboard, which you know from like basically any other image editing software. You have the list of layers, which there are currently no layers in. Um, that was also important to me um, because in Photoshop you always need to have at least one layer and I feel that that sort of was unnecessary because you can just disable that layer and only then you can get like a file without a layer technically displaying. So um, yeah, that's what I wanted to have definitely. The UI at the top here is uh, subject to change because um, yeah, I'm still working on that but the current state looks like this. And I want to change the file background to checkerboard real quick so I can demonstrate a couple of things a little bit easier. So what you see right here is the zoom. 
on the file, which changes when I zoom in and out. I also have the Alt key pressed when I do something like, like this, for example, or I zoom in here. And if I don't press any keys and scroll, it just scrolls in like that. It keeps the top left corner fixed and just resizes everything else. And it also works nicely with images. Let me show you real quick. So what I've imported here is uh, one of the wallpapers from the Sai Valley pack, which I will try to link in the description if I remember it after uploading. Um, if I don't, please call me out on it in the comments. But um, yeah, Sai is a wonderful artist and I highly recommend following him on Twitter because he posts amazing art like this one. So um, to sort of get into a couple of the features that I've implemented so far, um, as you can see, here's the X and Y position and the width and height, uh, height of the image. So as you can see, when I resize this and I'm also pressing shift, um, it keeps the aspect ratio and yeah, resizes the image. And if I don't press the shift key, it does not keep the aspect ratio. Would, what I have not implemented at the moment is a control Z feature to go back, um, but I will definitely do that. Um, and it's definitely something that I want to do very soon. The entire project is open source and you can find it on GitHub, which is also linked in the description. And if you want to contribute eventually, um, you can easily do that to create an own fork, um, change something about it and then create a pull request and I will look through it check it for comp compatibility and if I like what you did then I will definitely merge it. Um, I'm very open to custom changes and adaptations or extensions, whatever you want to do. What I also uh, have is a grid and a snap to grid feature. As you can see that works really nicely and it works with scaling too which is nice. I can just easily toggle it on or off. I do think I will have to hide that behind a menu at some point. Maybe not. I will try to keep it very accessible um, as well as everything else basically on the UI, which will be definitely subject to change. What I also have right here on the left, as you can see, is the toolbar. The toolbar currently consists of the move tool, the paint tool, and the text tool. What is important to note is that currently only the move tool is really implemented if you want to do uh, if you want to say the paint tool at the moment only creates these very small circles and uh no real lines if you will it was just a little silly test if you if you want to say it like that and uh yeah the text tool does not have anything attached to it yet, uh, yet which will be subject to change as well the next thing I would like to tackle is that you can easily create new image layers, which will automatically be selected, of course. And you can also create new vector layers. The thing about vector layers is that you can easily create points, which will then be easily adjustable in terms of curviness, if you want to say it like that. As I've just crashed the program, I had to restart it because it is yet made to be perfect which is uh hard to do for sure but um someday maybe we'll get there i mean it's never going to be perfect uh let's be honest but um we can make it great i think and what you can also do that's what i wanted to show uh but then it crashed <laughs> um is that you can sort of link these together if you move slow enough uh, it's technically a bug, not a feature, but it sort of acts as a feature if you want. Yeah, the neat thing about vector layers is that you can sort of draw stuff and it sort of adapts based on the, on the frame rate. And it sort of lets you move it very smoothly without really interfering with you, with what you want to do. The next thing I want to highlight is that you can save the entire thing as a BMP file, a GIF, a JPEG, a PNG, or a VFI. A VFI is just a format which I've written for this program um, solely, which saves all the information about the layers, um, 
what is contained inside them and stuff like that. It also embeds all the images in the project file. So you don't need to have the files that you originally imported still on the disk after you've saved it to a VFI project file, which is really neat in my opinion because it acts the same way as Photoshop does. What I've worked on today, for example, is this add effect section where you can uh, choose between currently four effects which have predetermined uh, values sort of about what they do. I will change that into a little pop-up where you can uh, yeah, preview sort of what it does and just drag around some sliders as you do in Photoshop, for example. I guess we're going to start with desaturate a bit and you can see it slowly desaturates it by 20%. Um, that's what I've set it to for no particular reason, really. And um, then we also have this contrast function. And you can see it sort of shifts all the colors towards black or white, depending if it's bright or dark. Then we also have this box blur, which takes a little while, as you can see by this, by this progress bar in the top. And it also takes a lot of time for big images. So what we're going to do is wait for this to finish and then I'm going to come back. All right, and there it is almost finished. Um, as you can see, it is now nice and smooth. It is blurred. Um, what I'm using right here is a box blur and I have not cared about the edges yet, which is why those are still looking like this, like the original image there. But uh, for the rest of the image, the box blur works perfectly. Um, I've currently set this to 8 in radius, which is also part of the reason why it takes a long time. Um, but the other part of the reason is that the wallpaper I've imported is 4500 by 3000, which means it's a whopping 13.5 million pixels, which all have to be calculated based on many of their neighbors um, in a 8 pixel radius, which, well, takes a lot of time. The other thing I want to show is the rectangle to polar option, which sort of morphs the entire thing into a circle, basically. What I haven't done yet is the inverse, so morphing the circle back to rectangle, um, but this can also produce some really nice results as you can see right here and sort of reminds a little bit of the yin and yang structure maybe. Uh, you can also of course apply this effect multiple times. Uh, there's no way of seeing the effects yet, uh, which ones are applied and which, which aren't. Um, you can s <laughs> sort of play around with this and make some funny shapes. It also gets smaller every time you do it um, because of the way it just sort of works, but I'm gonna rescale that I think so it uh, sort of keeps keeps the minimum the m minimum side uh, either width or height and uh, sort of yeah keeps that to to not really lose any of the of the size because that's that's what the what the image used to be and and that's what it's what it's now it's really squished and tiny in there so yeah, there's a lot of stuff to still be worked on, but uh, this is what I've got for now. Um, I'm really proud of it. There's a lot more in the UI framework which I've written, but uh, I couldn't highlight all of that uh, in this program right now. Um, but there are definitely going to be a lot more instances in this when this is far more fleshed out with a lot more menus and a lot more options, effects and stuff like that. At the moment, I'm caring about all the basic things, uh, trying to optimize the entire flow of it and sort of building structures I can work with later on. Um, if you just find this interesting without really wanting to contribute or anything or really knowing anything about coding, then you can still follow this. I highly encourage you to because if you use an image editor from time to time, um, when this is sort of semi ready to be released, I really want you guys to test this because getting feedback from multiple people is really really helpful for development and if you want to participate I would highly appreciate it. Um, yeah, 
that is it for this video. Um, I hope that sort of gave you an idea of what uh, I've been up to partly. I've been also working on an album and stuff like that and many other coding projects, but um, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut about these for now and just let you know about this one. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and see you next time when there is something else to tell. Bye-bye.